Hello subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vibs here from SlideNerd. In this video, we're gonna talk about dependency injection with general examples. What is dependency? What is injection? What happens without it? What happens with it? And why do you need it? Let's take an example where you have two objects, A and B. A needs an object B to do its job. Therefore, B is a dependency of A. This is the definition of a dependency. For example, it could be a customer, it could be an account, and you say that customer has an account. So for example, you could say that customer needs an account object so that they can remove money or deposit money. This means the customer depends on the object account, right? Let's take a look at how we can supply the three values as such. You can either create the dependency, which would be create the account in, inside the customer class or you can fetch the account object say from a database or a cloud storage service or you can get it simply as an argument for your method or constructor inside the customer class now we are going to take an example and find out what is the best way to do it so what is dependency injection now that you understand what is a dependency it simply means letting a third person create the object that you need for example, the customer will not create an account of object inside its constructor or method. Rather, it will rely on a third party to supply the right object at the right time. And why would you need a third party? Why can't you just do the way you do things? You will understand that when we go through a nice example that shows what happens without dependency injection versus how things progress. So let's take our test example which is going to have three objects there's going to be a bar object a bar database object and a cocktail object let's say this is an app for making or serving drinks online and you need a bar object which would do something like this you can say bar equals to new bar and you can simply say bar dot get cocktail supply the name of the cocktail and you get the drink and let's say the customer will go further and order this drink so that it can be delivered to them so as a newbie programmer my get cocktail method is going to look like this it will take a string argument it will construct the bar database object here and then it will use that database object to call get cocktail pass the name that we supplied in the method get a cursor and from that cursor create an object of the cocktail and return that and let's say your bar database class looks like this it has the get cocktail method here it takes a name it's going to open the connection that you see usually with your blah 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 SQLite stuff and it's going to simply return the cursor object back. Now this is a bad idea. The reason this would be the two statements which are going to give you a lot of trouble as you go down the line. One of them where you say DB is new bar database and the other one where you say return new cocktail row. You see you're constructing both these objects right here. What if you want to do unit testing on the class bar? Now, if you remember the definition of unit testing, it simply means take one class at a time, find out if all its methods work properly. Now, you won't be able to unit test this class bar because you need the bar database object and the cocktail object. Now, one of the things that people do in testing is create something called a mock object. Now, this is a fake object that they just supply to kind of test stuff. Like, for example, you may like to try and see if the cocktail can still be retrieved from a fake database containing dummy entries or can you create a cocktail object from a dummy cursor object that contains fake entries once again and you cannot have these actual objects created over here and you cannot unit test your class bar fully if you have such dependencies so the best idea always is to construct everything somewhere outside the class and get them inside your class and use them. Let's take a look at the first approach where we can do things a bit slightly better. Now this is called setter injection and you will understand why it is called that way because notice the code for the bar class here. Here we have this method called set bar database. Now I have taken the bar database object from outside and I have initialized it and then I used that over here and I have supplied the cocktail and finally constructed it. So in this approach, the person doesn't create the bar database object within our get cocktail method, somewhat loosening things up. But there is a problem with this approach. In fact, two problems. One of them is the fact that if you have setters, your classes are gonna become mutable. In other words, more setters means 
more variables a person can control and set and that can really mess things up because someone can come later change the bar database object that they are supplying or people can manipulate it in some way in the idle world of programming people love classes that don't let you modify anything but in the practical world you have classes that try to keep setters to their minimum as a good programming practice now the other issue with the method would be this you see you cannot call get cocktail before calling set bar database because you see the get cocktail method needs a db object and if you try to call it first you're going to run into a null pointer exception because bar database is going to be null right so this uh, this issue needs to be fixed with a better approach and what do you think is the better approach it's constructor injection in this approach the constructor of the bar class says that i need a bar database object and once you have that object you can call get cocktail and the other person who is going to construct the object of bar has no choice but to give the bar database object while creating this right that way you have this you always ensure that the get cocktail method is never called on a null database but what is the problem the problem is that there is going to be a long list of parameters if you do this for a big class for example, if you go to my slider GitHub repository from Google, you will find out that I have this recycler cursor adapter. Imagine the amount of parameters I need just for this abstract class, which basically displays a recycler view from SQLite with a cursor adapter, which is custom made over here. Now, this would require a lot of parameters if we were to use constructor injection. Now, this is hardly like 200 something lines, but if you talk about a bigger class like having a thousand lines and having at least 20 30 dependent objects then your constructor list is going to be massive and that is not something you want to do to your user in other words a person trying to create an object of recycler cursor adapter will have to pass at least 30 different parameters if your constructor list is that big so the problem with this approach is this there are too many parameters setter injection seems to be better in some places and most importantly if you're going to ask the person to put 30 parameters in the constructor they're going to be like why the hell why there are so many parameters for this constructor and they're going to get pissed off and try to find a better library right now i'm sure you guys have been seeing this return new cocktail at the bottom and you must be thinking hey Vivs, you did not address this at all you're still trying to create a cocktail object over here so let me show you some fixes for that as well so if you go down and if you take a look at the other slide here i have simply taken the cocktail object as well as a parameter using setter injection idea and here i simply set the row on it or cursor on it and return it back now here is the problem with this approach the person who wants a return type of something has to pass that type first which is weird right imagine you wanted a cocktail here and you pass the cocktail here at the top it can be a dummy object or an empty object and then you set the row on it doesn't matter the person using your library or class or method is going to get pissed off trying to do this with many parameters if you do it so the best approach that we can think of so far would be something called the factory pattern let's take a look at this now if you go to google and type slide nerd udemy there i'll be talking about design patterns in java c sharp php javascript and many other languages but for those of you who have never heard that word pattern let me give you a very simple example you're trying to make an app and you run into a problem and you try to solve that problem by doing something next time you make a different app you encounter the same problem again thousands of people like you from across the world they encounter the same problem every time and then an expert decides to take the problem and try to make a standard solution now this solution is tested in hundreds and thousands of ways until everyone says okay if you have this problem then this must be the way you solve it and that is what a pattern is in any programming language so we are going to take a look at the factory pattern which simply means if you want to create an object create a class called its factory inside that class say drink factory in our case we have the get cocktail method here which is static and it is public it's going to construct the object of cocktail whenever you need it and you can simply say drink factory dot get cocktail i should have actually named it cocktail factory but i guess i'm a bit off so here we can use it by saying return drink factory dot get cocktail now here is the problem with this approach if you have 10 objects in your app or project you're gonna need 10 factories that's how we will start thinking 
and then you need to make those methods that give those objects and then there are many other things that you have to think about like how you call them like here you say drink factory dot get cocktail where you call them and whether it should be a single done whether it should be reference counted or track how many objects were created and so on now all these problems are handled as you go one step further into dependency injection now when it comes to factory pattern you're the one who's going to do all the work but when it comes to dependency injection it is going to take care of creating the object all you have to specify is where you need the object like account or bar database or cocktail and you need to specify how to create that object and bi will take care of the rest of the work in other words all this coding part for doing this is not a part of your project the dependency injection libraries handle all that work and we are going to take a look at the dependency injection libraries on slider.com which would be butter knife dagger 2 android annotations robo guys and several other libraries that offer this feature now if you notice i have not given you an example here of how our cocktail example and bar database would look like with dependency injection because it changes with the type of library being used one more thing bi is not just specific to android it works on angular js php javascript and several other languages that have a library and have objects in them so in the upcoming videos on slidenet.com i'll be talking about one or more of these libraries with respect to android for implementing bi in the meantime subscribe to our email list on slidenet.com so that we can notify you of the latest videos and posts that we guys are making out here and don't forget to google us out by saying slide on udemy slide on twitter and slide on facebook for social accounts and all the code on slide on github if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide Nerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day